Well, welcome back to the shop, guys. I'm Dave, and this show, show brand, I'm going to sh tell you everything I discovered about threading dies and also a discovery on high speed steel. For those of you that saw the video before last, you saw I was having problems with a quarter 20 threading die, trying to figure out and getting frustrated as what was wrong with it. That video was originally unlisted, um, and it was made for Irwin, because um, in the video I mentioned that I couldn't find any place to contact Irwin to get the part replaced. They've got a replacement site with a pull-down, and the pull-down lists all kinds of tools, but the dies are not in there. So um, I did... Um, finally find hidden at the bottom of one of their web pages or contact us and I wrote in there simply you know, it was a form uh, in the website and I wrote in there and said look I got a problem with a quarter twenty it's defective and here's a video to show what the problem is and so I had made that video and it was unlisted so you couldn't see it unless you um, had the link to it so I'm pretty sure I sent it early in the morning and towards the end of the day I never got a response so I figured what the heck and I released it as a public for all you guys to see. Um, sorry guys, his wife came out to go shopping so in any case the next morning I did get an email from Irwin and they I went to check the unlisted video and there were nine views. One of them was mine. So a lot of people looked at this video. And the email said, um, I guess everybody saw it, you know, uh, quality control, engineering, production management, and engineering was wanted to see if I would be nice enough to send them the die they wanted the die to do research on or something like that. So. Uh, it's on its way. I don't think it's there yet, but um, so oh yeah, in the email I did say you know yeah I'd be happy to send it back, but watch this video, which is the what the problem was, and if you still want it after engineering sees the video, then I'll be happy to send it back. So here's the video. Yeah, I just pulled out the screw, and I'm looking you know, here. It's a nut goes all the way on easily all the way to the bottom and I compared this underneath the magnifying glass and they're identical you can't even see light through there the threads are the same yet this will go all the way through right easily there's no fighting this <laughs> that's definitely all the way through I have no clue as to why this does not go on all the way. Just there, it's getting tight. Ah, now I can't turn it any. Oh shit! Okay. <laughs> ah, just nuts. Just nuts. All right, I see what it's doing. What I did was I took, oh, I don't know where it went. Oh, it's over on the block. I ran the other, let me get it. Since the existing threads here are all dirty and black from this die, I decided to run this guy over it from the business end. And I ran it up a little bit and trying to see what it's cutting, what is it shaving off. And you can look at it under the magnifying thing on the granite block. And if the threads, the threads are like this, you look at it in the light this way and you don't see anything. You look at it in the light that way and it's cutting right here. It's cutting this. It's not even touching, it's not even touching the point. It's just cutting in here. 
on all of them. So there is something then definitely I can tell something is wrong with the die without a doubt. It's something about the angles or somehow it was made that it just doesn't thread right. So that's it. We talk about insignificant. How far can I zoom in? Turn the camera. That is what came out of the die. Oh, it's going to lose it there. But I don't know if you can see. There's like there's not much. <laughs> That's what it's taken off. I mean, it's just the tiniest sliver off that corner. I go back out. No, the tiniest sliver is coming off of that. It's a little string piece. So go figure. You know, yeah. It's not significant enough for the nut, but a cumulative, it jams it. Just that little bit. I wonder if any of the other dies have that, because all I did to check them was just run them on a run a screw through them. Hmm. Oh well. Okay, so the last email or replacement die is on the way. Uh, I haven't gotten it yet, so it's been a few days give them more time. But to let you know everything that I discovered about these threading dies versus re-threading dies, I'm going to take you over to the bench and show you what I figured out. All right, here we are back at the bench and <laughs> the difference here. It's after all of this experiments and learning curve, there are two different types of dies, hex and round. The hex dies are strictly for repair work. They are not intended or designed um, to do threading. All the round dies are, are designed for threading. And once I really tuned in on what, why there's a difference, I'll, let you, um, I'll show it here in a bit. But even the machinist handbook here <laughs> clearly states uh, Hexagon re-threading dies. These dies are of hexagon form and resemble a nut. They are intended for repair work in the reconditioning of battered or rusty threads. So, uh, also I went to the McMaster car website who knows what they're doing and you cannot find one hexagon shaped die that does not say re-threading or you can't find one that says threading because I did watch a video, there's not that much out there that really clearly says this. Nobody's pointing it out. They all know it, but they don't point it out. Um, Tublicane actually had a hex die that he said was for threading. He did mention, you know, the, the difference in the shapes, but I was kind of shocked when he said there's one, he had one for threading, was threading with it. Um, there's two types here. Uh, no, not here, but uh, yeah. Um, they come in two different types of steels. One is high speed steel and the other is high carbon. These are all high carbon steel. The high speed steel costs quite a bit more and the reason for it is because they last longer. And these guys, the re-threads, I don't know why they're so cheap compared to a threading die. Uh, this whole set that I bought was around $38, $40. The same set in a threading die would be close to $300. I don't know why so much money, but um, the difference, once I tuned into it, it hits you square in the face. They're funneled, and so one side's bigger than the other, and you're supposed to start threading with the bigger side, and it's kind of a no-brainer. Um, but it's the angle of the threads. Um, if I can, yeah, let me zoom in just a little bit. Wrong way, there we go. All right. Get that in the camera view. I don't know if you can tell too much about it. But um, this is the one, and who's, who uses these threads? Auto mechanics. Because, yeah, car bolts and things rust, corrode, and they use these to try to clean them up to put them back on the car. But it's the angle of the threads. Now this, I'm orienting this so it's going to do, if it were going to do threading, you're going to turn it clockwise. But if you look at the, the angle of this, i got to tilt it so I can see which way is which. Uh, can't, okay, yeah, I can see that one. This one 
this is the cutting edge. This is higher than this edge. So as you go clockwise, that's going to cut. But this edge is higher than this edge. So when you go counterclockwise, this is going to do the cutting. So that's why there it's, you know, it's, it's high, high, and high, high. So it cuts in both directions to do the cleanup. They're also supposed to have different types of tips to them, so they actually aren't supposed to cut. But you've seen the threads that I've been turning out here in these videos and close-ups that they're gorgeous threads. Now if you look at the true threading die, what's interesting is um, this is set to go clockwise, so you're going to have a high edge, high edge, and a high edge. So they're all cutting as you're turning it. One of them, though, is always flat for some reason. Um, maybe it's to do chip breaking or something like that. But these are designed so all the edges are doing the cutting. Do I have a three? Yeah, I do even have a three here. And this is the same thing. Two of them, that edge is high, that edge is high, and this is flat on this one. So that's the difference once you tune into it uh, between a re-thread die and an actual threading die. Again, I wish I knew why threading dies are so much more expensive. They're both high carbons. They both, I'm sure, take the same kind of machining process to do it. But um, So there's my two cents worth on it. I just wanted to make sure I'm probably the only one out there that's really pointing out if it's hex shape, it's a rethread. Oh, and the other thing that was curious too is because everybody shows in the videos that since they're funneled, tapered, when you run it, when you tap it, um, it the last little piece of the tap, this is going to be bigger so you can't run the nut all the way down to the head. So everybody shows, including me, flipping it over and then threading it in there. And with a re-thread, since they said it's designed to cut as you go on and designed to cut as you come off, the re-thread will, if you flip it over, take the threads all the way up to the shoulder. Whereas a true threading die, uh, saw videos too where they say you can flip them over and I should actually try one myself because I don't know why you would be able to flip it and still thread because like I said all of them are cutting, all of them are geared to cut in the clockwise direction. If you flip it over, let's see, clockwise this is the high edge. If I flip it over, this is the high edge here. Yeah, it shouldn't be cutting when you turn it over. But yet I've seen uh, YouTube videos where they do flip it over and finish the threading all the way up to the shoulder. Kind of interesting. Maybe the flat edge is doing it or something like that, the chip breaker edge. All right, that's my two cents worth. All right, for this last part, high speed steel. Um, show you what I discovered which probably everybody out there knows but me until I discovered it making your own high-speed steel tools the finishes that you can get and so on so let me bring you over to the bench to finish this off let's give you guys an update and I hope that's in focus it looks like it I'm as close in as I can get here on the bench uh, one of the videos a um, couple two of them ago or something like that I mentioned that I put on order um, a high-speed steel insert from the little machine shop. It finally came in so and I ran a test with it. The surface that you're looking at right now this is 1018 and that was done with um, the Harbor Freight carbide insert. So you can kind of see it. This finish, this is the uh, insert the little machine shop uh, just high speed steel insert and it's pretty nice it's really smooth and then this is the finish the high speed steel uh, that I made myself that I showed in a video so that's the update on this it came out pretty nice pretty nice both of them this one's super super smooth and this one, I just uh, put the edges. It's super smooth too. It's just slightly not as smooth. But yeah, where is the insert too? I 
shape. I lost the insert. Yeah, this is the carbide one. Let me turn it off and find the insert. Found the insert. It was in a tool. Bring that in the view. There's that's it. Just high speed steel. So it came in yeah at my magic kind of angle and turned it. Get both of you know, get all the edges in the oh well that's just playing with knurling and steel. <laughs> so move it over a little bit. There we go. So that's all. Alright, I showed uh, that I had just for grins and giggles but quickly made my own tool here on a grinder. Just bang it out. It's flipped it over on a, a stone, knife sharpening stone. Ran it a little bit and I can see you know the stone was hitting it because the stone was curved like this which made it nice because I could just sharpen that edge really nice. And the finish came out ridiculous. So I was thinking, you know, what is this stuff going to do on aluminum? So I just took, a, I didn't, have, didn't want to mess with this guy, so I just took another piece of high speed steel. Actually I'm not sure whether it is or not because you can kind of file it, but it's hard whenever it is. And again, just quickly, you've seen the plate that I've got on the, um, the grinder. There's an aluminum plate that you can see when I'm doing the intro, it's sitting right there. It's slightly above center, so I just run it in. So all I did was to just go back and forth on the wheel for a little bit. So I've got my relief, and then I just quickly ran around on it, and I ran it on aluminum, and got a gorgeous finish. All the money that I've spent on all these carbide inserts and tool holders, because I just went straight in like that. It cut it like it was nothing. I mean, a lot nicer or easier to cut different chips too um, than a carbide insert or even that aluminum one that I uh, showed in the last video but what a kick yeah you know? <laughs> and uh, the neat thing about this is you know what this is that is the um, Harbor Freight <laughs> insert holder I just flipped it around and said I know these things are hard <laughs> and just cut the edges on it so what a kick so that's the last thing, and I just ordered off eBay um, five, uh, what is it, five, three-eighth by three-eighth high-speed steel bits, three-inch long, for 20 bucks. You know, three, six of it was shipping, but, so, let's see. And the, oh, the other interesting thing I discovered, you'll see I backed this off. When I did that one finish, this one, whatever, I was that far above center. Whoa, I'm not even in the camera. I was that far above center and it cut this finish. It, huh? <laughs> but it shouldn't have cut anything at all. So I had to loosen it up and did this finish with this guy and stuff. So I just wanted to fill you in. I'm probably going to be doing a lot of high speed steel tools, making tools myself here coming up.